I don't want to go back to the past, but maybe back to the future. What might we see in the future? Well, we might actually see three dairy farms in our 2,000 hectares of Gloucestershire, plus a goat farm, maybe less milk being produced, but more on-farm processing and adding value in some of those areas there, maybe half going to multiple retailers, but a lot more going to local retail and direct sales. So there's more of a local food system starting to evolve. Beef and sheep farms, again, in the area, maybe more local abattoirs and food, food processing or meat processing. Maybe the imports will go to the multiple retailers, but more of the local food supply will go to local retailers and local direct sales. Pig farms, again, more outdoor and barn. Uh, again, closer to the abattoirs. Multiple retailers probably still securing through uh, economies of scale the international market work, but maybe more local retail and local direct sales. And the story goes on around the arable farms, maybe now going into bioalcohol production and the byproduct of that going into animal feed uh, as a more concentrated protein feed. Oil seeds going into biodiesel and again animal feeds coming out of that and maybe local pulses going into the animal feed market or the human consumption. Horticulture again could be looking to grow there and maybe an increasing direct sales and maybe processing of surplus fruits and so forth into value added products. Our 2000 hectares might now end up with having 60 farms instead of 50 farms. More importantly we might have 20 full-time owners and managers, 40 part-time owners and managers, 10 full-time and 20 part-time but maybe 50 to 80 people who are involved in community supported agriculture. People from urban areas working in the rural areas in agriculture that they co-own and co-support. We've already seen this happening very successfully in Stroud. And we'll see a significant farm diversification. More pasteurisation and dairy products with direct delivery. Go and see John Alvis just by the Bristol airport and you'll see what I mean. Cheese and yoghurt processing, maybe the waste going to pigs as a byproduct. Beef, sheep and uh, pig farmers part ownership in an abattoir, maybe using a lot of their waste into anaerobic digestion and recouping energy. Fruit and vegetable co-ops, box delivery, waste again going to either composting or anaerobic digestion. Biodiesel, bioalcohol plants and the surplus is going to animal feed and composting and AD syndicates including urban green waste recycling. These are possible futures. So what are the key challenges for future farms? First one is how are we going to maintain and get access to energy for production and for transport? How do we maintain soil condition and fertility? How do we manage our water resources? How do we connect with our markets and our consumers? And how do we deal with our waste and maybe the urban waste problem as well at the same time? They're all connected. We're actually looking at farms which could be building fertility through its own manure use or by recycling green waste, either through composting, through green crops and fertility building crops, but also through anaerobic digestion and the safe fertility that comes out of the liquor at the end of the process. We could be looking at food production and processing for local markets. We're looking at processing waste coming back onto the farms in a safe way, either through composting or through anaerobic digestion. We can generate our own fuel collectively for energy and uh, in terms of static energy but also in terms of mobile energy through uh, LPG and that gives us the fuel to not only work our fields but also deliver our products to the urban communities and bring the waste back to close the nutrient cycle. That of course links to our community and our market, uh, our communities, our local communities are markets for produce and also markets for our surplus energy. They're sources of labour, especially if we can link uh, agriculture and communities through community supported agriculture, including David's bringing the farm into the city. The urban, the peri urban agriculture models are something that needs to be looked at seriously. It's a source of nutrients and energy from the organic waste, not only on our own farms, but from our markets and our consumers, helping solve the urban waste problems of our urban communities. And it can foster and create uh, social and community links between rural and urban communities. My cup is more than half full. These two link closely together and they can link through a local food resilience, giving us our local supply and our low carbon farming together. So what are we doing at the Royal Agricultural College to try and help contribute to this? Well, first of all, we actually want to develop and share local and low carbon farming strategies. We're already looking at farming based on agroecology. We're looking at carbon sequestration, footprinting and trade-offs from production uh, to local and global food supply. We want to look at all those areas and see how we can come up with measures which are meaningful and that people can hang their hat on. 
We want to avoid oil-based farming, energy dependence, and start to go towards an energy independence within agriculture and food supply. And we're very interested in looking at models of community-supported agriculture, both on our doorstep with Stroud, looking at our own SAR ancestor, and indeed very keen to see how we can contribute to Bristol developing its green halo with its farming community. And we're also interested in adding, adding value to products at the local level. So we feel that we can contribute to your uh, strategy in all of those areas and work with you. On the energy side, the energy independence, we could actually demonstrate, given the right sort of incentive and with our interest, biomass heating. We're already putting a plant in at the moment. And to be able to monitor that and show its use would complement that that's going on within Bristol. We're also interested in anaerobic digestion, looking at green and food waste from local institutions. We started to map this out. Uh, we're looking at the potential to aggregate through portable anaerobic digestion or pre-digestion using the Bioplex system and then looking at more static AD either through the conventional system we're all familiar with or some of those evolving more of the efficient rumen system that's being developed in Germany at the moment which may have up to a tenfold improvement in, in efficiencies. And of course we'd also be interested in demonstrating biodiesel from home and con contract growing the waste of which could either go into biomass or AD hence closing the energy system for ourselves, hopefully giving us an energy service to, to sell. So, where does that actually leave us at the end of, the, uh, of, of our sort of ideas about how the Royal Agricultural College could contribute to Bristol? Well, I think we're actually interested ourselves in actually de developing a centre for future farming. This is what we talked about at Harn Hill, but also demonstrating the energy area of it. And we actually want to support Bristol in developing its green halo because I believe that if you can connect Bristol to its local farming communities and increase your local food resilience then I think you can go a significant way towards meeting your carbon emission reductions and I think if you can link to the rural communities around you what you're trying to achieve in Bristol you will have a greater chance of getting there. Again we're particularly interested in that area and one of my colleagues in the audience is very interested in looking at local food resilience as a PhD study so if any of you are interested in those sorts of areas, we'd be very happy to talk to you. So that's how I see it. So I've had a cup that's been half empty, the pessimist. We've had the cup that's been half full, the optimist. We now have the cup on the table, and I'm actually the, uh, the person that wants to go and take the opportunity. I want to be the opportunist to help you work towards that. Thank you very much.